Okay, what we have here is the Badlands 2,500 pound ATV winch got on sale at uh, Harbor Freight for $59.99. Uh, the reason I picked it, it has a lot of the features that the more expensive winches have. It's got the release here so you can uh, easily unspool it. It's got the automatic brake that locks. Um, it's also got the it looks fairly waterproof. I'm not sure how waterproof it'll be, but for riding in the East Texas area with lots of swampiness, we'll, we'll find out. And another cool thing is it came with the uh, remote that works up to 20 feet away. Of course, it comes with all the necessary things to install it. It does not come with the winch mount comes with the roller feed hardware. Um, this is going on a 2011 Rancher and uh, I had to purchase this winch mount off Amazon for $41 I believe. Uh, the winch mount's a KFI. It comes with all the hardware you need to install it. And uh, from what I can tell the holes do line up for the three bolt pattern here. Alright, let's see if we can install this thing. One of the things I've already done is remove the plastic bumper off the rancher and I've removed the skid plate that the stock skid plate that comes with the ATV. You'll see it's pretty easy to uninstall. You've got two bolts here, two bolts there, two bolts here, two bolts here, and then there's two, two side ones here, 10 millimeter. Really easy to pop off. It doesn't take but 15 minutes or so. Same with the bumper. You've got a couple of the clips that slide in, little plastic clips. You've got two bolts here on the side that hold it. And I've also uh, went ahead and removed the bolts on the bumper here. So I've got plenty of clearance to install it. I haven't completely removed it, but I'm thinking that it should be enough to install the winch. We'll see. One of the things I'm noticing is the uh, Badlands Fair Lead does not match the KFI mount. So I'll, we'll have to make some slight modifications to this plate. I'm going to go ahead and mount it first and uh, put it together and see if we should drill new holes right above the stock or possibly come down there and use the stock hole on the right and uh, drill a small hole between the two on the left. We'll see. Okay, we'll have to go ahead and remove the bumper according to the directions. Um, I had already removed these prior to making the video, but you've got two bolts here, you've got two bolts here, and then you've got two more bolts here underneath the headlight. Should come off. So the directions say to actually install the mount into the bumper. And um, another thing that I'll have to do from looking at the directions is trim trim this plastic lip right here to accommodate for the winch plate. Okay, I'm looking at the directions for the winch mount that come with the KFI plate. Um, one of the things I noticed is it says you'll have to position the winch so the top is pointed down to the fair lead. Uh, I noticed on the Badlands it's coiled to the bottom. So I see this protector plate here. What I'm thinking I'll have to do is remove that plate and move it to the other side. That way as this rotates around it'll coil from the top per the directions. So let me see if I can get that done. It looks like it should be pretty easy. I've got two Torx screws right here. Should be able just to remove those. Flip the plate around, I'm hoping, to the other side. Okay, well that plan's not going to work out. There's no mounting holes and it looks like these two are offset. So what we'll do in this case is we'll just remove this safety plate and uh, we'll turn the winch like it should be. It's like an 8 millimeter wrench fits this little hole here and just use your Torx wrench if, you can, if that'll focus on that to remove those screws. 
Okay. Got that removed. There's the safety plate. Now we'll be able to mount this thing, I think, correctly. Let's just see how it goes into the plate. Okay, with the, with the bumper off, this is going to make this job a lot easier. I've got the plate set in place. We've got, okay, I went ahead and uh, bolted the mount. I think that's how it's going to sit in the ATV. You got four U-bolts here. Uh, wire is going to come through here. Fair lead's going to bolt there. Um, my wife's going to run down to Harbor Freight see if she can't find a fair lead to fit these stock plate holes. Make our life a lot easier. Since this Harbor Freight one obviously is not going to fit. And I haven't bolted it down there yet. Those are just hand tight. I went ahead and uh, loosen this a little bit. I pulled this and gave me some slack just to see how that was going to fit. And uh, yeah. Alright, so the next thing we'll do is we'll get the winch lined up and bolted in. Anyway, what I was saying before my wife started the truck up, um, these bolts that come with it, they're not stainless. So I've seen several people um, upgrade these bolts stainless um, I'm not going to spend that much time in the water so I'm just going to use the stock U-bolts that come with the KFI mounting kit uh, something else you may be interested in before you tackle this job a good set of knee pads and we spend a lot of time on your knees four bucks Harbor Freight and um, I also I got some of this really cheap protective wire wrap to run the cables when we get to that point. Okay, we're back. Got my knee pads on. It's going to make this job a little easier. Alright, so it looks like I made a mistake over I told you it was a three bolt pattern. Looks like the Badlands 2500 is a two bolt. You've got one bolt here and then another's going to go here. You want to center this with the fair lead as much as possible. Alright. Let's see if I can get these bolts in. Okay, stop the like camera a bit. Uh, two choices of uh, bolts and nuts to use. These are the ones that came with the KFI plate. These are the ones that came with the Badlands wrench winch. Um, these seem to be a little more heavy duty. Those are a little bit lighter bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and use this uh, recessed one that came with the KFI. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and secure the winch to the mounting plate. Looks like the KFI bolt, recessed bolts do have an Allen wrench head. Looks like a half inch bolt on the back. Um, I only had one stop nut and I used uh, a nut and a washer from the winch kit to, to finish using the two KFI bolts. I was short one stop nut so I may throw some blue Loctite on to uh, Matter of fact, I think I will. I'll go ahead and do that to ensure that it doesn't come apart. I don't know if I mentioned, I think I did, but uh, these winches are only 59 bucks. So, uh, comparable 2,500 pound winch on the market goes for 150 and up. Uh, on sale for 59. Uh, you, they come with a 90 day warranty. My thinking is if it goes out, I'll just buy another one for 59 bucks. Um, as opposed to spending big bucks on one. Uh, the plate was 41, the winch was 59, so for 100 bucks I have a 2,500 pound winch on my ATV. The rancher is not a super heavy ATV, so I don't expect I'll need much more than 2,500. Okay, let me stop the camera. Okay. The first this. time I secured the bolts, I noticed my winch was a little uneven, so I went ahead and loosened it back up and uh, re snugged them. Um, I went ahead and just put them pretty much as tight as I could go without straining myself too much. I don't know if there's any foot pound rating you should tighten these but all right let's um, go ahead and next we're going to tighten these up a little bit not super tight because we want to get make sure it's all going to fit into the bike first and um, once we do that we'll 
put the bumper back on, get it bolted, and uh, then we'll start working on the wiring. Okay, I'm just going around tightening the bolts a little bit, got it back on the ground. Just wanted to mention when you tighten these U-bolts up, um, you want to do these just a little at a time so they tighten evenly. You don't want to have one U-bolt facing this way and the other that way. You want it to be nice and uh, even. Okay, here's what the ATV looks like with no front bumper. And this is basically going to be mounted up somewhat like that. Of course, a little higher. Uh, looks like since we did flip the winch around so we could get the, the leverage of the top, um, the uh, Badlands badge is going to be facing the inside. Oh well. It's a price we're going to have to pay. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll get to, we're just gonna mount the bumper next and go ahead and put the plate on. Um, skid plate, we'll leave the plastic bumper off. We've gotta trim that. And uh, so what's next, I'll go ahead and okay, start the camera. we got the mount and the winch on. Everything's just finger tight at this point. But uh, yeah, it fits like a glove. Pan out some. All right, I'll go ahead and tighten those down and install the body plate next, skid plate. Okay, I've got this all mounted. Um, I realized if I was to put the skid plate on, it's gonna cover up a good uh, deal of the winch. And uh, in case I need to get in there to retighten some bolts or to get my hand in there to reposition this, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that off and work on the wiring next. Um, here's the directions that uh, came with the Badlands 2500. should be pretty simple. Um, I've seen where some people have uh, wired it to a power on switch. Uh, I'm going to look at that. One of the problems with this um, winch is the very large solenoid, as you can see. I'm going to have to try to hide that and I'm also going to confirm that this is enough cable to reach the battery on the Rancher 2011. <clears throat> the battery is located, as is most ranchers, the very back. So I'm going to try to mount the solenoid to the left and as high as possible so it should give me enough um, room to reach the battery. <clears throat> just by glancing at it, I think the solenoid would probably find a home up near the top of the handlebars. I'm going to look at that a little closer, and then once we uh, decide on the spot, I'll turn the camera back on. Also, while I'm thinking about it, I wanted to mention another negative thing about the Badlands 2500. Here's the remote. Um, unfortunately, well, I've got a bit go on my glove. Unfortunately, when you need to change the battery, you've got four screws there and you actually have to take the circuit board apart to change the batteries out so that's kind of a they don't make that easy on us the Badlands winch is made in China um, as are most winches I think the only American made company is the Warren which uh, you're looking at 400 bucks um, another Chinese winch that's a, a step up from the Badlands is the um, Terra 35 Super Winch, and uh, we'll be installing this on a Grizzly 2014 in another video. Okay, we're back. Unfortunately, the mounting options are going to be a little more limited than I originally thought. Uh, positive and negative coming to the actual winch are a little shorter than I thought, and uh, my two battery cables. It's going to be a, a tight stretch. So what I'm looking at doing is possibly mount it behind the radiator. I'm going to try to maybe get a U-bolt and see if I can secure it around this bar. Um, it's not the most ideal situation. I'd really have to get it a little higher. It does look like it's sealed pretty well, so hopefully the 
um, moisture is not going to cause a problem. Okay, let me see if I can find a couple of U-bolts, see if we can get this secured. Okay, well, I didn't have any luck finding any hardware to mount the solenoid. So I definitely would not recommend this for pro professional installations, uh, but I'm going to just use some uh, vinyl straps to secure the plastic solenoid box that gets uh, these bars. Like so, and the box is not real heavy, so I'm hoping uh, the strap at least last a few years. That's something I'll need to check because they will rot and that is liable to fall at some point. But anyway, that looks like the, the best option for me at this point to get this box right here about where I want it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of the protectors, the wire protector, to match this. So. Do that next. Okay. We've got the protective wire wrap installed on these two ends. This is just going to give it a little additional protection from heat, from moisture, uh, from the, the rubber wearing away. It's also going to prevent vibrations from wearing into the, the, cop, uh, the rubber coating here. So I'd recommend this if you guys are installing. A winch, especially on an off-road machine such as this. Okay, got the solenoid somewhat strapped up there. I haven't tightened it down yet. See, it moves a little bit, but uh, I think I have enough clearance where it's not going to touch the steering control arm. And um, yeah, so we'll just snug these. Looks like it's going to fit perfect as far as reach to the winch from the solenoid at that location. I may uh, add some dielectric grease to these connections later. later. Um, for now I'm just going to bolt them on and we'll get the rest of the wiring done. Confirm everything works. Alright, let's see if we can figure a way to Get these two ratted where they can avoid as much heat and movement as possible. Okay, went ahead and mounted it behind this plastic here, the gas tank coming from the solenoid. Just went up back behind here. I don't have it secured yet. I'll do that next. One of the questions I had is how do I want to enter the battery compartment? There is a kind of a beveled hole right here. Uh, the seat actually clips in the back right here. So I'm hoping we can run the wires on this edge right here. And it's not going to cause a problem with the seat clipping in. And I'll be able to access the battery. This uh, winch is a direct feed. So it's always going to be on even if the ATV switch is turned off. You're still going to be able to use the ATV. Uh, so have to be careful. Always keep the ATV running. When I'm using the winch, because this thing does pull a lot of amps, can drain that battery quickly. Um, Alright, I'll go ahead and see if we can't finish routing this cable, getting it secured. Uh, there's a circuit breaker built in to the positive lead. Um, the red one coming from the winch is going to, actually from the solenoid, it's going to mount here. And the uh, negative is going to come through and bolt uh, directly to the battery negative. Okay, we got the wire strapped in pretty good. You can see I used the straps to mount the solenoid. I've got one strap here. I've got it routed underneath the plastic here. Got one strap there, one strap there coming around the air box up through this hole. Okay, got it wired into the battery. This is a eight millimeter wrench for the breaker. Um, I did run out of protector for this curve, so I'm gonna improvise something. I don't want this part to, to rub a hole in my rubber mount there, my rubber casing of the wire. All right, we'll put it back together and test this thing out. 
Okay, I got the ATV started up. Got the, this is the only control that comes with this rent, this uh, winch. You don't have a handlebar switch or anything. So only the wireless remote. You have to hold the on button down for three seconds. See the LED come on, that means the winch is ready. Okay, I'm gonna press the off button. Let me set the camera down. Hadn't got the plastics back on. What do you think of that, folks? For a little over 100 bucks in parts, you can have yourself a 2,500 pound winch. Thanks to Harbor Freight Tools. Thanks to KFI for the mount. Let's get this thing back together and give it one more test. Okay, I was just putting the seat on to make sure it still fit after running the wires through that seat hole. It does touch, but I think it's going to be okay. I ended up picking up another package of the protector wire and uh, added a piece right there to help with that uh, slanted area. Okay, I've got all the, the U-bolts here secured. As you can see, there's no play on it. Basically four U-bolts. And I also uh, hit the winch one more time just to make sure the winch mounts it, make sure these were tight. And next we'll go ahead and uh, Put the skid plate, trim the bumper, and uh, finish up this okay, installation. Okay, stop for a second. One thing I did notice putting this back together, if you notice some of these Honda bolts, ah, uh, come on, autofocus. Well, some of the Honda bolts have a longer sleeve than the others. You need to save the one with the longer sleeve for this top front part. This got a good. It's gonna have to go through the um, two levels of plastic. You've got the the bumper plastic. It's got to go through here, as well as the skid plate plastic. So be sure to save the longer flange ones for that. Okay, I'm just uh, just now positioning the front bumper. Um, it looks like I may not have to trim as like I initially thought. I may have to trim some here to get this bottom bolt to fit in. But other than that, I may not have to trim the bumper as they suggested in the directions. Uh, one of the things I did find at Harbor Freight was this fair lead. It's going to match the holes to the KFI mount a little better. It doesn't have the rollers, unfortunately. It's really designed for a synthetic uh, rope where I've still got the steel. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a try because I hate to uh, drill a hole weakening this mount and then Who's to say down the future if I have to replace the mount anyway, I'm sorry, replace the winch anyway and I go ahead and go with a better quality winch and don't want to screw up the plate and it did cost 40 bucks so we're going to mount this aluminum fair lead this was $17 at um, Harbor Freight Tools we'll see how this works out okay, it looks like I will have to trim some from this area um, you get the bumper to fit flush. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use some dikes. Get this done, and uh, like I said earlier, I may have to trim right in here for that uh, to go around the winch. But, uh, let me turn the camera off. And okay. That part. Finally able to get the bumper to line up with the bolt holes. I had to take quite a bit off here. I'd probably say a half inch, and uh, cut some out here because the U bolts. Or it felt like something was hitting there, so I grooved these ribs out a little bit more. But uh, after I took about a half inch off this whole piece, it looks like it's going to bolt right up. I'll go ahead and complete that. All right, here's everything we used to install it. We are done. Basically, just a few wrenches, sockets, 
Allen wrench, um, needle nose, screwdrivers, wire cutters, knee pads, uh, the wire wrap, nylon straps and directions for the mount, as well as the, the winch directions. We didn't use those much though. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, as you know, we didn't use the uh, fair lead that came with it. We used an, another one that seemed to fit better. I mentioned earlier. There is some hardware that we didn't use. Alright, let's test it out. We'll grab the remote. Yeah, hold it down three seconds to turn it on. A little more. A little more. That's good. Okay. Alright. That's it. Have you seen this installation? It took about three and a half hours total. There's nothing sticking out. You gotta have that mount. Without that mount from KF5, this wouldn't be possible. Hartford Tool sells a $4 mount that does not fit. I tried it. Wiring's pretty much all hidden. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.